Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of Bardar Kesari Jain College, I am here to pay the greeting to the people who added to the success of, of this event. Prayer delights God's here. It melts his heart. So let us start our day with, with the prayer. Prayer song. Yesterday, we completed our first day program of international submit on biotechnology research successfully. Uh, we continue our second day program today. First, I would like to welcome our honorable secretary and trust member in absentia for permitting us to con con conduct this conference. There are no good college without good principal. It is a great pleasure and honor for me to welcome our principal, Dr. M. Inbavalli, ma'am, who encouraged her continuously. Welcome, ma'am. Amazing things happen when women help other women. I feel extremely honored to welcome our PRO, ma'am, Ms. B. Shakti Mala, who support always. Welcome, ma'am. If your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more. You are a leader of our department, ma'am. It is a glorious moment to extend my warm welcome to Dr. M. Komati, ma'am. Welcome you, ma'am. I'm proud to recognize and celebrate the innovative product and technology made by men and women of the biotechnology community that are helping to increase the environmental sustainability of our planet from generation to come. It is a glorious moment to extend my warm welcome to our Dr. S. Jagannathan, Assistant Research Officer, TCARD Production Laboratory, Pasteur Institute of India, Kunur, and Dr. Nagaraj Surya Devara, Lecturer, School of Bioscience, Masha University, Malaysia. Welcome, sir. It is a great pleasure to welcome our all head of the department and professor of various department and our, our college, other college also. Welcome you all. Finally, and more importantly, I would like to welcome participants from various institutions and other institutions for joining us to the International Summit on Biotechnology Research. Once again, I welcome you all. Thank you. Every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. I invite Dr. R. Jesu Jayasudan, Research Coordinator of MKJC, to introduce our chief guest. Please, sir.
A very good morning to all members of this conference in person and afar. It's an honor and privilege to introduce Dr. S. Jagannathan, Assistant Research Officer, Pastor Institute of India, Kunu the Nilguris. Dr. Jagannathan received his doctorate degree in microbiology from Bharat University for his extensive research in optimal production of pure and potent virus cell vaccine in roller culture. Conducted at Pasteur Institute of India, Kunur. He holds a double master's degree in MSc in molecular biology from University of Madras and MBA in human resource management from Peria University. Dr. Jagannathan has also completed diploma programs in bioinformatics and office automation. His major thrust area of research is vaccine development and some of his key research highlights include nano vaccine formulation of basidus pertussis needle free immunologic, immunobiologicals, development of rabies nano vaccine, to name a few. He has a strong expertise in downstream processing, animal cell culture, nano formulations, and vaccine formulation. Dr. Jagnathan has published several research articles in peer reviewed journals, and also authored book, authored book chapters in national and international journals. He is also the editor of books, Advancements of Biological Science by Association of Indian Biologist Publishers. Virtual International Conference Proceedings by Global Academicians and Research and Associations of Indian Biologists and Concepts of Genetics by AIB Salia Publication. An editor in journals, uh, namely Journal of Applied Virology, Journal of Breeding and Distilling, Vaccine and Vaccination, and Journal of Materials and Environmental Science. Dr. Jagannathan is a member of several committees, namely COVID-19 Task Force Committee, a State Committee, Exhibition Committee and ex expert and also expert committee member in Bharatiya University, Islamia College, Ratnam College of Arts and Science, and DG Vaishnava College. Dr. Jagnal is the recipient of several awards, namely the prestigious award for author scientific credits in 2010, Dr. Abdul Kalam Young Scientist Award in 2016, Excellence Research Fellow Award in 2020, and the Best Research Award International in 2020. He has also delivered several guest lectures and chaired many seminars and conferences. Sir, it's indeed a great pleasure to have you amongst us virtually. We welcome you, sir, and request you to deliver the lecture. Thank you. Hello. Uh, thank you, sir, uh, for introducing our uh, valuable guest. It is a privilege to invite our uh, chief guest, Dr. S. Jagannathan, Assistant Research Officer, TCRV Production Laboratory, Pastor Institute of India, Kundur, Nilagris, to take over the session. Please, sir. Yeah, good morning to all. Hello. So, good morning. I'm an audible. Yeah. Yes, sir. Audible. audible. Okay. Uh, okay. Morning, sir. Kindly, uh, kindly uh, allow my video, ma'am. Okay, okay, sir. Okay. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. You can uh, present now, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, good morning to all. Good morning, uh, sir. I thought uh, very well, pleasure to give my sincere thanks to the management uh, and also the head of the department, Dr. Komadi, and uh, other colleague, and my student, uh, Dr. Thain, Mr. Thain Murray, for uh, Give this opportunity uh, to be a uh, part of one uh, guest lecture in that uh, international uh, biotechnology summit related to vaccines. This thing, and also, uh, okay, uh, please allow the screen sharing, ma'am. Uh, and also, uh, the great, uh, I just I seen on yesterday's uh, seminar also, it's very uh, good topics related to current P1. So today's I'm going to speak about that worry of vaccines. Uh, excuse me that. Now please allow, I want to share my screen. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, just allow, allow to share my screen now. Okay, okay, sir. Okay, please. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, you can present, sir, now. Okay. Yeah, there, I'm uh, going to speak about uh, this thing. And, uh, 
chair. Okay. Okay. And this. Uh, have you seen my slide, ma'am? No. No, sir. It is not visible, sir. No, no. I shared. Yes, sir. It is not visible. Okay. Okay. No, no. It's coming. Either you. Have you seen any in the white color background of little bird? Yes, sir. When the white color background is visible. Yeah. Okay. That means it's coming now. Now it's okay, ma'am. Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll go to the full view. Yeah. Vaccine. Okay. Uh, my topic is an overview of vaccines. So here you can see, uh, I clearly picturize on one, two, three, three, three of uh, pictures. Uh, one is uh, the vaccine that is called as is a liquid vaccine, is along with the needles. And the next is a symbol of our uh, Passage of India Kunu. And here you can see the Passage Institute. Uh, it is more than 114 years old Passage Institute. In front of our Passage Institute, you can see the small tuck. So that is it's a cold carrier. That's a carrier of uh, vaccine, vaccine to that all out the country. And again, I will uh, chat something about our Passage Institute. You can see that it will be in a small uh, sort of dome-like structure of four corner. The dome-like structures are nothing but as here, a structure of rabies viruses. Okay, so because of that only, this intro started in 1907 uh, till date, we are in the production of DPT group of vaccine as well as uh, tissue culture and vaccine. Okay, what is meant by vaccine? It's a biological preparation. It can be administered through various routes such as injection, Inhalation or water, it, which stimulates immunity against it, it stimulates immunity against any infectious agents. Usually, it contains a harmless variant of the pathogen, either it's a kill or the attenuated some microorganism, or it should be in a lab generated altered form of its toxin. So, toxin means it's a disease causing uh, material, either it's a protein or any kind of neural based things. So that toxin is altered in a lab. There's an inactivation or a detoxification or on its surface marker. Okay. And also what's immunity? Uh, the ability of living being, either as a human or animal or any organism to resist and protect itself from the harmful effects of an offending microorganism or its secreted toxin. The efficiency of the immune system, it lies on its ability. It can go into recognize foreign invaders without causing harm to hosts, bone cells, and tissues. And also the vaccine, it acts by allowing the immune system, it's going to recognize and memorize the harmful viruses or bacteria to their toxin. As well as we are going to give the booster doses of the vaccine is it boosts the memory of the immune system and increase its ability to fight against the invading pathogen. Here, once we are going to vaccinate it, we have that immune system, uh, that immune system going to development of antibodies, that antibodies, IgG, IgM, IgG, different kind of antibodies. So that antibodies only is going to fight against the, any kind of harmful pathogen or toxin. Okay, in contrast with some of the fact about uh, vaccine, it's a major contribution that vaccine have made in saving countless lives around the world. Okay, not from the particular country. And also every year up to 4.5 million children's lives are saved by immunization by statistically by World Health Organization. And also it's a vaccination. It is a proven and one of the most cost effective child survival interventions. Each and every country is having their own immunization program as per the guidance from that World Health Organization to deliver selected vaccine to the targeted beneficiary, then UIP. UIP means it's a universal immunization program. In India, it was started for, as the government of India. So the, uh, from that only, a lot of newborn children are uh, also going for vaccinated like the BCG, diphtheria, portisis, tetanus, measles, mumps, rubella, polio, and a different kind of vaccines are free of cost by the UNICEF immunization program. That is, who are the 
particular uh, token beneficiary means the pregnant mothers for that uh, during pregnancy we are going to give a tetanus toxoid as a uh, on the month of 5 and 7 is a uh, tetanus toxoid antibody secreted during that uh, newborn baby birth and also infant of children who are the high, high risk to disease preventable by the vaccines they are the target actually there are uh, 27 causative agents against which vaccines are available and many more agents and many more uh, agents are targeted for the development of vaccines but vaccine are not only for preventing infectious diseases and also some help the body to fight a range of illness by activating the immune system to recognize the active tone so it also not preventing and also activate the immune system that's why if are vaccinated on the day of 3 by bcg until our lifetime that bcg based developed antibody it can prevent from the macrobacterium tuberculosis infection okay so here i gave uh, some of the vaccine disease and also that is a vaccine preventable disease like you can see that uh, tuberculosis is a causative agent is it mycobacterium tuberculosis uh, it can control by bacilli gamet gure so here mycobacterium tuberculosis it's from human pathogen the bacilli gamet gure that bacteria is derived from the uh, mycobacterium avium that is was attenuated strain of bcg and also diphtheria is a caused by uh, conibacterium diphtheriae you can control by diphtheria toxoid either it is a pd vaccine or is a uh, dtp group of vaccines a triple antigen like uh, bordeaux pertussis it causing whooping cough it can control by either it is a whole cell pertussis vaccine or acl or pertussis vaccine in developed nation like uh, clostridium and tetani is a cause to agents it causing tetanus we can control by tetanus toxoid and also it causing septic uh, disease here so once a person going to get any kind of accident is uh, is getting some of the uh, wound uh, that wound will leads to the kind of uh, what do you call is the infection that infection it can controlled by the tetanus toxoid vaccine like uh, polio mellitus is a cause to agent uh, can uh, caused by caused to polio we can control by oral polio vaccine and also either is a inactivated polio vaccine here i'll tell one thing about polio it's the last polio mellitus cases was happened to india in uh, 2011 january 13 from that uh, 2011 to till date we are not receiving any polio cases uh, so that's why in 2014 Uh, world health organization as a declared india has attained the polio free status but still in the world two countries having the polio mellitus one is afghanistan another one is pakistan uh, because of that uh, last month 31st also we people are very much gathered about uh, uh, oral polio drops that is a mass vaccination there is one of the proven uh, vaccine uh, proven vaccination to the control that this thing and the next that measles virus causing the measles disease we can control by the measles we can control by the keep the immunosuppress influenza vaccine like rabies virus is a caused agent we can control by uh, can control by the uh, rabies vaccine uh, je Japanese encephalitis virus is a causative agent we can control by the je vaccination like uh, rotavirus that rotavirus it's causing uh, diarrheal diseases that diarrheal diseases we can control by the uh, rota vaccine these are the some vaccine preventable diseases yeah uh, and also here i am taking some of that uh, what do you call how is a drastically reduction of that infection of some of the diseases like uh, tuberculosis hepatitis b and meningococcal meningitis measles whooping cough tetanus and hemorrhagic influenza type b meningitis yellow fever and diphtheria so you can see this was i taken from that ihme instead of health and matrix evaluation so around 7 lakh people was affected in 1990 of the tuberculosis in around 2016 it can reduce around 4 lakh 35000 can say around 3 lakh people so uh, not affected because of this thing because of what they are vaccinated bcg like um, what i call is hepatitis also it is start from uh, hepatitis is uh, hepatitis is start from measles is uh, 3 lakh now it's around in um, less than 1 lakh less than 50000 like that a lot of disease was controlled that disease was uh, controlled by the vaccine as a suitable vaccine that vaccine was used by the mass vaccination program in india we have that uip okay
I'll say salute to the great uh, two persons. One is uh, Edward Jenner. Uh, he was the first biologist uh, to improve the immunity of the particular disease on uh, 1796. He was going for variolation. That concept was taken by the great man. So he only tested the empirical knowledge, the wild cattle uh, disease, cowpox. It can uh, able to protect uh, against human disease of smallpox. So that only one disease is fully eradicated till the world. And the next, the great man, Louis Pasteur, uh, he was in the development of rabies vaccine in 1885. So, and also even the uh, first person, he can isolate the viruses from that, what do you call, uh, rabies infected dog or rabies infected, uh, rabies infected rabbit and the different kind of animals. So that is a neuron based vaccine uh, because of himself only, uh, that vaccine institute all over the world, like 32 persons were there. That is main aim to that the development of uh, different kind of vaccines, even uh, development in different you know, pathogenic disease also. Okay. Here, so now we got some idea about what is vaccine and also what are the things there and who was the vaccinology, some of the scenery we got. Now we are going to, what are the ingredients? So what is mean by ingredients? So vaccine, it is not containing single antigen. So vaccine can only a tiny fragment of the disease-causing organism or the blueprints are for making a tiny fragments. And also, it can uh, it contain other ingredients to keep the vaccine safe and effective. Safe means it could not be able to cause any kind of uh, adventure reactions or contamination based things. So safe and effective. So each vaccine component here serves as a specific purpose and each ingredient is tested during the manufacturing process. All ingredients are tested for the safety to the patient. You can see the later like antigen, stabilizer, adjuvants, surfactants and preservatives and diluent. Okay. So what is meant by antigen? So all vaccine, it contain an active component that is called as antigen, which generates an immune response or the blueprint for making the active component. The antigen may be a small a part of the disease causing organism like a protein or sugar, or it may be the whole organism in a weakened or inactive form. But also what is stabilizer? The stabilizer prevent chemical reactions from occurring within the vaccine and keep the vaccine components from sticking to the vaccine wire, sticking on the vaccine wire. You can already you've seen in your first slide. And stabilizer, it can be a lactose, sucrose, such as sugar, or glycine as amino acids, or gelatin and a protein. Sometimes that recombinant, uh, recombinant human albumin derived from animal. Like uh, next is a preservative. Why we need preservative? It can preserve, prevent the vaccine from becoming contaminated once the vial has been opened, if it is a multi doses of vaccine. And also, if it will be used for vaccinating more than one person. Some vaccine don't have the preservative because are stored in single vial and also are discarded after the single dose administrator. The single vial, single dose vaccine for the single dose, CSHD, single human dose, leads to the single person. Uh, most commonly used as a preservative to phenoxyethanol as a preservative. It has been used for many years in a number of vaccine and also it is used in a range of baby care products and is safe for use in vaccine as it has some of the little toxicity humans and also it is some unproven preservative depends upon the vaccine depends upon the person. And the next is surfactants. So the surfactants to keep all ingredients in the vaccine it's a blended together during the formulation or production. It is in the prevent settling and clumping of filaments that are the liquid from the vaccine. So the surfactants being keep, uh, keep the vaccine, it is in a transfer mode, a transferency mode. There is no possible the clumping and grouping of the vaccine material to settle in the vaccine here. They also often used for food like ice cream. Next is a diluent. So diluent is a liquid used to dilute the vaccine to the correct concentration immediately prior to use that. And here, the most commonly used dilute is a sterile water. Uh, sometimes it is in uh, normal saline, around 58 millimolar sodium chloride. For example, is the one freeze-dried vaccine is there. So you can see uh, when going for vaccination, the doctor or nurse is taking the vaccine from the first four degree that's a fresh. 
who has taken that clip of cap it containing some that uh, some of the button shaped metal will be there along with like the dialogue so open that uh, cut the dialogue while but uh, taken that one ml exactly one ml of the material or uh, what prescribed by the vaccine container is going to dilute here fully shaking that so fully dilute so during freezeation that is in the vacuum condition that material while go to the dilute at you have to dilute it using dilute and it will be most sterile it's a dilute, most sterile going for vaccination that is the role of dilute the adjuvant some vaccine also contain adjuvant and adjuvant improves the immune response to the vaccine while vaccination sometimes by keeping the vaccine at the injection site for a little longer or by stimulating the local immune cells the adjuvant may be a tiny amount like is aluminum salts aluminum phosphate is aluminum hydroxide or is aluminum potassium aluminum sulfate and the aluminum has been shown not to cause any long term health problems and the humans ingest the aluminum regularly through eating and drinking so what we are doing we are preparing our food material everything in aluminum container so what aluminum was we are taking daily at even compared to the adjuvant it is very less amount okay so now we we see in it, what are the component of vaccine what are the ingredients of vaccine already we got now how the vaccine is going to development so most vaccine have been used for decades uh with millions of people receiving them safely at every year each vaccine under development must first undergo screenings and evaluation to determine which antigen should be used to invoke an immune response this preclinical phase is done without testing on humans that is in vitro you can get clarity from the next slides the an experimental vaccine is first tested in animals to evaluate its safety and potential to prevent the intended diseases if the vaccine triggers an immune response is then further tested in a human clinical trials in a three phases okay here so development phases in the laboratory so laboratory first i am going to uh, what do you call mm, okay we'll take it uh, what do you call in uh, what reason is speaking about covid 19 so covid 19 we are affected we find out in the november 2019 it's a covid disease virus so find then we find out that that disease was caused by the some of the viruses the covid virus sars cov2 is a virus so during that the sars cov2 virus was identified identified that identified in a and also wuhan laboratory uh, they are developed in a first uh, uh, positive agent that from that positive agents they are going to production they are going to uh, what do you call it? it is a developed a vaccine using with that animal cell culture technique i will show that last slide about how that vaccine was put is that so let test it in the animals why we are using the animals that's no possible to that testing in a human being during the vaccine development that's a ethical issue so uh, as per the uh, what do you call it, it is in uh, cpcac or institutional animal ethical committee or different ethical committees there so as per the guidelines that enter vaccine was going to those was uh, got a very good reason in vitro test number 1 so that kind of vaccine candidate was tested in animals once tested in animals then going for the clinical trials in a human being as a phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 uh, phase 1 means lesser uh, human being than 100 to 1000 and 10k and fine industry like that so then approval once we got a very good result from that the clinical trials in humans by 1 2 3 uh, phases then we can uh, send that to regulatory body so here regulatory body means is nothing but uh, in world health organization they are the uh, one of the certified authority in the world and also like fda so in india we have that cidesco central drug uh, officer cdho uh, central drug laboratory kasoli so based on the cidesco and the cdhs we send that to submit the entire uh, trial results what results we obtain during 1 2 3 and three phases based on that our results the regulatory going to declare that your vaccine going to for multi, uh, for that bulk production based on the bulk production we are going for continued surveillance and after marketing okay so here what are the phases we have so you can clear that is a phase 
phase zero means already we are tested in a animal is so only in human trial phase zero optionally it involves 10 to 20 volunteers yes you can uh, take it that is a volunteers volunteers means there is no compulsion to the person to involve this thing so how to see is a, a target of this thing is a to see how the vaccine going to work it leads to the page one during the page one to into the safety totally 2200 volunteers we selected so selected volunteers to enter the safety of the vaccine molecule vaccine candidate and next is a phase two it need a few hundred volunteers either it is a thousand or uh, one thousand or two thousand like that to check whether vaccine is working uh, at the dose desired in a phase one and its safety so it is a 1 ml dose or 2 ml dose or 1.5 dose so what we decided in the page one what ups, what result we obtain the page one that page one will be elaborated to the few hundred person and then page three so here page three hundreds to thousands volunteers yes here only going for uh, thousand volunteers means 10,000 also we are going to accept that and also in the thousand volunteers we are going to divide it into two groups group one and group two uh, group one that group one is going to receive a vaccine the candidate and group two receive the place bio or other vaccine so place bio means like uh, distilled water or anything so that kind of things to check efficacy and adverse event what's going to be adverse on going for vaccination they are going for itching or induration or erythema or is going for fever or is going to allergy or is the seizures as going to any kind of death so everything we can assure and also confirm in the phase 3 trials finally everything is got a very good result we can send that vaccine to the uh, details to that already told is a regulatory authority so going for post marketing surveillance is done to monitor long term adverse event in a real real world scenarios here we are going to mar- we are going to marketing post marketing post vaccination it's a surveillance means so here already we are selected for that person is 0 to what that means a 24 to uh, 30 years old person is a male or male gender and also the particular weight so the particular weight person the point is zero days seven day 21st day different the books don't also there each and every day is their vital signs like what is the over bp how about their uh, what do you call the weight and also temperature and everything we have uh, check that for that long term a uh, long term monitoring to, uh, to to check that at adverse events okay so that is a development so you, now in this slide, I'm going to focus about what is the difference between empirical vaccine development. Empirical means what is the traditional method we have that empirical vaccine development here. So empirical vaccine it started from 1700 from uh, what you call it is an Edward Jenner period to until 1975. Here the different kind of vaccine development uh, technique used one is killed organism and a live attenuated and the variolation as a smallpox, live attenuated as a, uh, what he calls OPV, killed organism is a rabies, and also polycycled vaccine, pneumococcal, and the cell culture vaccine is a polio or rabies. So these are the events covered in uh, empirical vaccine. What we have now, we are in 2021. So we have that modern vaccine development. In that modern vaccine development, we have that uh, different kind of uh, techniques involved. That one is a uh, Recombinant DNA technology, so hepatitis B and uh, what is called uh, AAO and also human papilloma vaccine, uh, vaccine and next a glycoconjugate vaccine uh, using with uh, human based influenza vaccine and a nanoparticle based vaccine and adjuvant based and liposome based formulation here. I'll share one thing. Uh, here, one of my students, uh, her name is Pain Murray. Uh, she was, uh, what do you call, uh, she was uh, under me, uh, we are in the development of nano-based formulation of uh, tetanus and adipitate oxide. So we got, that is one type of nano formulations. Uh, if we are in that 2018, we uh, done that kind of activity. Like synthetic seed also there and immunotherapy based vaccine then and structural vaccinology, yes. That reverse and the structural vaccinology is a proven efficiency here to the development of COVID-19 vaccine. So generally, a vaccine development, you can see the letter. So how the vaccine going to develop in nations? 
See there, small facts. First one is small facts. I don't know. We don't know when it was started, but only we are in the development of vaccine in 1949. Like in the influenza, it is started in 1938. We find out that this is that one. So already this is there. We find out that. So only 2004 only we are in that proven vaccine. Proven vaccine of that influenza, like in 1882. So here we are in the identify the tuberculosis. Still there is no vaccine available. I mean, fully effective and per vaccine only in 2014. So we are in the development of uh, we uh, 2021, 1921. We are in the development of BCG group of vaccine. Still, it is in not in 100 percent of efficacy, like malaria. So you can see that on malaria in 1880 we identified still no vaccine, but many effective anti-malarial drugs are available against the malaria, like uh, typhoid. We identified in 1884. On 1989, so we are in that developed successful vaccine like meningitis. 1880s, 80 is identified in 1981 only. We got a very good uh, vaccine, and also that vaccine 81 we find out the vaccine and 2005 only it is scheduled under FDA. This one, like pertussis, in 1906 we identified and 1948 we was uh, successfully implemented the vaccine. In dengue fever we uh, identified 1907. When the vaccines were started, still there is no dengue vaccine was available now. Then polio, 1995, uh, 1995 we are identified, and uh, up to 1955 we got a very good result there. By like Zika virus, identified on 1947, still there is no uh, good vaccine against the Zika viruses. In chicken fox, we identified on 1953, uh, 1990 only the successful booster vaccine also added in 2006. In measles. We find out that disease in 1953, and uh, also still we have uh, combined with measles from rubella. It's a good vaccine we have. It is in uh, 1985. That vaccine also like the mononucleases and hepatitis B and the rotavirus. We identified in 1973 and 2006 only. We got a highly efficacy vaccine. That means safety, efficacy, and the potent vaccine. Like eight, still there is no vaccine available. And the cervical cancer, that is a human papilloma viral infection, 1980 when we are identified, and 2006 uh, we got the very good results. So these are the vaccine developments still we having in that world. Okay, so now you got the uh, clearance about uh, how the vaccine was developed and what are the different phases available. So please, what are the empirical vaccine development and as a modern vaccine development, what are the different kind of here? It's a combined with what are the different types of vaccine available. Here you can see the uh, live attenuated vaccines. It's the live attenuated. It's an altered or weakened form of any kind of microorganism which lacks of virulence. What is meant by virulence? Yes, virulence is nothing but as causing the pathogenicity or disease. But so the lacking of virulence, there is no virulence or yeah virulence, but it retains the ability to create the immunogenicity. Against the particular disease, for example, to prevent measles, mumps, rubella, we have MMR vaccine, like chickenpox vaccine. Uh, it's from varicella vaccine, then oral polio vaccine. But oral oral polio vaccine is for that to prevent polio myelitis. And the next is inactivated vaccines. The live organisms are killed and inactivated and used as a vaccine. Uh, they are usually in heat stable. And we do not need exact temperature storage. What we have in the Covaxin, that also in the same kind of inactivated vaccine. And uh, next is a, for example, the Pertussis vaccine is a heat uh, sensitive bacterial vaccine. And the Rabies vaccine, you can get the much more information how it's going for inactivator. It's a Rabies vaccine. These are the two category of live attenuated and inactivated vaccine. Next is a toxoid based vaccine. The toxoid based vaccine. The altered form of toxins rendered inactive by this a formally it's a chemical or physical alteration by heat uh, freezing method alteration to be used as a vaccine. For example, tetanus vaccine as a part of DPT group of vaccine already I told that and diphtheria toxin is a toxin based vaccine. And the next is a combined together is a, that is a that is called as a uh, modern vaccine as a subunit recombinant polysaccharide and a conjugate based vaccine. These vaccines are produced by employing more modern technologies, 
like recombination, polyps of trade, and reverse axonology, uh, purifying and isolating the active components by of the microorganism, it can ability to produce immunity, but not the diseases like uh, human papilloma vaccine and hepatitis B vaccine. So now you got clear about different type of vaccine. Now I'm going to that deals about vaccine production. So here the vaccine production. So why we need vaccine? So here I'm going to take a small example as a rabies. Okay. So rabies disease is a zoonotic, all or no. Uh, this is the transmitted uh, from animals to humans. Uh, generally, it's caused by rabies viruses. It's a lesser virus genus and also family of WBDA. So with this virus, it can be able to transmit it, and the saliva of rabbit animals generally enters the body via infiltration, uh, biting with a dog, saliva from a rabbit animal into your wound. Or sometimes it scratches and direct exposure of mucosal surfaces to saliva from infected animals. is a 100% fatality. 100% fatality means once. Once the virus was entered to the body, it's once entered to the brain, the person leads to death. There is no chance to that. Uh, what do you call it? Coming it's alive. Uh, is it preventable? And uh, this is most commonly in the dogs, exactly in the 96 percentage. Sometimes uh, four percentage, like in monkeys, donkeys, horses, cows, buffaloes, goats, sheep, and pig. Only in uh, some of the drastically four percentage. Occasionally, one percent wild animals, like mongoose, fox, jackal, camel, sometimes in elephants. Okay. According to the WHO, it's epidemiological. Globally, 77,000 people have died for rabies. In, in India, holding the first case, first rank in the 33,000 cases, annually in over 150 countries, with uh, 95 percentage cases occurring uh, in Africa and Asia. In Asia, we are the part number one, uh, with the exception of Antarctica. Rabies is endemic on all, all continents. Why there is no rabies virus in Antarctica? Because rabbits is a zoonotic. Zoonotic means it was, uh, what do you call it? It has been uh, transmitted from animal to animals. So where the animals should be there, if that, uh, what do you call it? If that country containing thick forest here. Because thick forest only, it can be through from the one own country to other country via the forest based. But here, Antarctica, it's a surrounding with the full surrounding with the water. Some of the islands, like uh, what do you call it? It is an island of Australia. There is no rabies cases. Island of New Zealand, there is no rabies cases. So like that, some of the <coughs> some of the countries. So those having the island, there is no possible of the rabies uh, disease person that. Uh, and also, it can be wide uh, spread under reporting uncertain estimate. It is likely that is a number is a gross underestimate true border the disease, and. Uh, 90% of the rabies cases are dog mediator. Yes, straight dog mediator. And the bottom of the disease is disproportionately borne by the rural poor populations. Okay. Now you can see that some of the animals. It is collected from the various things and also we taken from our past Institute uh, Museum. Uh, it's like that. It's a furious and suspicious. You can see that. So that dog is there, is waiting for this. You can see something, the salivation pooling of the saliva here. You can see it was a chain here, like on some of the white color beyond that, uh, in that near the, uh, what it calls the tongue, you can see the white color, there's a salivation. And the next is a uh, raccoon, or raccoon and fox, it will have raccoon, it having that, that kind of virus. So again, it's a very good uh, rabbit dog. Why I'm saying a very good rabbit dog? It's waiting for, uh, to get the person. And the next is uh, the girl. Uh, this is called as a uh, dump, as a rabbit raccoon, and other kind of animals see that salivation of this thing. So these are the, some uh, selected furious animal and a paralytic rabbit and the rabbit raccoon. You can see that how that rabbit is going for transmission. Here, the dog, uh, it containing uh, saliva here. When the saliva is going to bite, is saliva containing rabies viruses. So rabies virus generally is a single stranded RNA virus, or negative sense viruses, and also five structure protein, and a glycoprotein, lipid protein, manoprotein, L protein, G protein, various protein is a structurally. Okay, how it's going to transmit it? Once a bitten a person, here, you see that, is a bit on the surfaces here, in that, uh, th below the thigh pot here. So virus going for uh, what he calls in, going to bind at that. So immediately it was present that the skeletal mesh due to the uh, directly go to the dorsal root ganglion, and the dorsal root ganglion directly leads to the brain. 
infection neurons with the neural disinfection. Yes, the virus cannot infiltrate impact the skin. Virus cannot infiltrate on the skin. It is, it is not moving to the skin. Below the skin, we have the blood brain bed. We have that different kind of what you call is an uh, neural transmitter, like acetylcholine or dopamine. Because of that, only it's going to travel and dots are going to the bind to the spinal cord region. Once the virus reaches the brain, it further replicating, resulting in the presentation of clinical signs from the patient. Why? What are the signs here? You can see them. This person uh, is a rabbit affected person, rabbit affected person. He could not able to this thing. It's, it's, this person is having that spasm. He could not able to speak out something because the entire brain, the central brain is fully, completely malfunctioning. There is no proper functioning of the brain. So because of here, what do you call, it is in uh, this area, it's called as a uh, spasm here. This color is a, what do you call, it's a vocal cord. Near the vocal cord is in a uh, small um, trachea. Is there. The trachea is just, uh, it is made up of a striated muscle. The striated muscle, it is not going for relax. There. Due to the unrelaxation, that person is not able to swallow anything. So if you cannot swallow something, what are the secreted from that the saliva? The saliva is coming out, uh, coming out. That is called the salivation of this thing. And the next, the person having that uh, final stage of uh, equal not able to respirate something. And here is hydrophobia. Hydrophobia means you could not already told hydrophobia, photophobia, aerophobia, and uh, finally leads to that spasm, spasm leads to the person. You could not able to that because that's you could not able to drink the water because that spasm muscle is going for uh, that side muscle is going for uh, what it is going for composite. It also closed that, it's not going for relaxed, and finally it leads to the this level. So these are the some rabbits in human because. That rabies virus, once entered to the body, it not infiltrated to the skin, it's going to directly bind to the acetylcholine receptor, dopamine, and the neural transmitter. Once it binds that, it can be regularly towards migrate and migrate towards the brain. But that migration days depends upon that how much virus was bounded with that neurotransmitter. And also, bounded virus, what is that concentration of incubation period and infective detector? Depends on that, that virus going to migrate to one, uh, one year to two, say it will take minimum one, minimum three days or four days, it will take month, it can hear. Depends upon the person. Once it reached to the brain, there is no uh, medications available and there is no antiviral drug available against the rabies. So it leads to this kind of activity. How can we control by the vaccination? Here are persons to uh, we are the production of rabies vaccine. It was started for rabies vaccine production from 1907 until December 2004. We are in the production of rabies vaccine using with the technique called as sheep brand. And uh, it's nothing but called as a, a neural tissue culture based vaccine, a neural tissue culture based thing. We are selecting of the healthy sheep. The healthy sheep, we are going to inoculate it on the uh, uh, brain to that uh, sheep viruses, rabies viruses. After the inoculation, we are collecting them, uh, what we call as the infected brain. Rabies infected brain, that is going for, uh, that brain going for further processing as a vaccine. So what we are used in that same vaccine from until December 2004, as per the guidelines of WHO and also in national regulatory, that vaccine was banned. So in the meantime, 2001, we are the least uh, rabies vaccine that was indigenously developed technique called as a tissue culture based rabies vaccine type. But that vaccine and this vaccine also, we are using the one strain that is called as a PV11 rabies virus type. You can see the rabies is a PV11. That PV11 is a pasture virus 11. You can see the great man, Louis pasture. So we obtained that virus. That virus was isolated and characterized by the Louis pasture. That strain we obtained from that Institute uh, of Paris. From that virus strain, we kept one port is a liquid nitrogen storage container for the long term here. And another vial, we are preparing as a master seed. That is a master seed. From that master seed, we are preparing the working seed. From that working seed only, we are going for the uh, infection. Before that, you can see that. Okay, uh, you can see, we'll go, I'll go to the next slide. You can see something. Yes. Here, when is a cell culture, media, reagents for monolayer of the cell line. Here, you can see the cell line is a media. 
So what media are we using? 8047 is a minimum essential media. It containing rich amount of growth promoting factor like fetal cough serum or fetal bovine serum. That is a role to the attachment of cells in the surfaces. If the cell surfaces in that glass bottle or plastic bottle is a microcarrier base. So here you can see the monolayer form of neural cell line. So once the cell line was monolayer formation, then going for virus propagation. Here the selection of the suitable virus. So here only we are using PV11. Already I told, see, uh, working seed viruses. That working seed viruses, then we are going to the infection in a roller bottle. This is a viral structure. Infection in a roller bottle. So monolayer form roller bottle, or it is in a microcarrier beads, is a bioreactor. So once collection, so every 72 hours, what is the virus going for multiplication? The multiplied virus is going for represent that uh, plenish media in roller bottle culture or in bioreactor culture. That media contains viral virus each uh, 72 hours. Every 72 hours, we are collecting something that is a viral harvest, then we are replenishing with uh, uh, what do you call is a new media. So again, another 72 hours is going to be able to synthesize a, produce a, some virus. That is called as a viral harvest. So what we done, we collected the viral harvest in that uh, every sounded out, it's a five viral harvest. So namely, viral harvest one, two, three, four, five. That entire viral harvest going for cold. That is called as a single viral harvest. In the single viral harvest, then going for concentration. You can see the concentration. Here is a concentration. Using with that 100 kilo dalton of the PVDF, polyvinyl difluoride membrane is an ultra filtration cassette system. So here, that SV is a 200 liter, they are going to concentration unwanted material. Here, those who are having the above 100 kilo delta molecular weight, like rabbit oil protein, that only is a concentrator. But below 100 kilo delta, what are the things? Cell metabolites, and unutilized serum protein, unutilized media protein, other unwanted, everything is going to as a decant. Only that 5 liter, from 200 liter to 5 liter is a concentrated viral harvest. So this is going for, then subsequently going for the in-process quality control testing, then going for suitable inactivation. Inactivation means that concentrated viruses get tested in animal. So what is there? In, what is that uh, virus data? Then immediately going for inactivation using with beta propiolactone. It's a, it's a proven uh, inactivating agent. In one in 4,000 dilution is going for inactivated. After the inactivated, they are going for ensure in animals. Because inactivation, very tedious processes. In the meantime, there is no possible to that reversion of virulence to the active form. So we're testing in the animals. So if there is no irreversibility, so that means there is no virulent actor immediately going for, uh, then going for purification. Then the purification, we are using the suitable chromography technique. So suitable chromography, we are using, previously we are used to the zonal centrifugation around 32, 32, 36,000 RPM. So we collect the different fraction, that fraction going for secondary run, like that. It is a TDH process. Now we are uh, implemented the new technique that is called as an affinity purification system. That affinity purification system used with uh, cellophane sulfate chromatic system. So here we can pass our concentrated inactive rabbit protein as going for binding in a matrix. After the binding, we can elute it with, the, uh, elute it with a different kind of buffer, elution buffer, increasing concentration of uh, sodium chloride and pH. So based on the molarity, that virus elution fraction was selected. So here that elution fraction is selected. So immediately that paying for that. Uh, selective fraction going for that as safe uh, or going for quality control test to meet the safety, efficacy, and potency that is called as a quality attributes. Once it's vaccine was everything done, going for added for formulation like suitable stabilizer, additives, human albumin, maltose, and the thymus, or like that. So, after the addition, you can see going for that. Uh, filling in here, filling wires. So filling wires is a 2 ml of wires. We are added with only 1 ml of material is a single human dose. So it's going for filling and freezing in here, uh, what do you call it, a freezing chamber. It will take 72 hours, 36 hours process. Going for primary drying, it sucked out the entire moisture. That liquid material convert to a ice, uh, what do you call it, ice formation and going for a converted to a powder formation. That is a freeze-dried form of rabbit's vaccine. 
So immediately we are collecting the random sampling. We send to the quality assurance, uh, quality NRA, National Health Authority, CDL. So that sample also analyzed there itself because uh, there is a national regulatory people. They are going for re-analyzed our vaccine. There, if they're intended to their use like the safety, efficacy potency is immediately the vaccine going for supply to the nation. So here you can see the vaccine. Here now, GMP, good manufacturing practice. Nowadays, we are introduced what is called as a vaccine while monitoring. It's a general. If you, you uh, those who are attending the person here, if you're going for vaccination, you can check the vaccine while if having the VVM. Vaccinal monitoring, but here that brown color, that uh, purple color, and in inside on a square shaped structure, that is a color indicator. If that vaccine it is not properly stored in plus four degree during uh, manufacturing or during transport or during vaccination, so the color automatically going to change that. So you can check that as a vaccine while monitoring. So now you can, okay. Now you can see that. So here only inactivation, pooling, clarification. This is a, some flowchart about how the vaccine is going for using that. This is a flowchart on the methodologically. So you got some clearance about how the vaccines were production in, a, uh, uh, in our past laboratory. Now we are going to some clarification about how that co-vaccine was produced or how the inactivated vaccine was produced, what currently we have in that uh, entire area here. So here, that virus seed, same, one is a three uh, processing, one is virus production, inactivation, purification. Here, the virus seed, COVID-19 virus seed, so in, in, uh, infected with line in a cell factory, or it is in roller bottle culture. Then clarification about, clarification is collection of viral organs. That is a clarification. That clarification around 40 temperature, they're going for supernated. Around 50 liters, they're going for beta propyl like inactivation. So that inactivation is validated. So ensure the virulence in animals. That inactivated supernate going for purification by the concentration of buffer exchange. There's a diophilation and going for benzone is, is a one type of enzyme. It's going to digest that, uh, digest that uh, host, uh, uh, host DNA. Uh, related to viral cell lines and going for IEX, ion exchange chromatography, then concentration, then going for size seclusion uh, to remove the salt concentration, again going for clarification which is with 0.22 micrometer filtration and added with the formulator as an adjuvant, as an aluminum hydroxide, as a vaccine product. So these are the whole virus vaccine production what currently used in the world for the COVID-19. Okay. Uh, here, uh, I'm going to conclude my uh, talk. Uh, before concluding, I will uh, say something about the great Ruiz posture. So yes, uh, little science talks uh, takes you away from the God. Away from God, but more of it takes you to him. Be a, uh, uh, what do you call it? It is in uh, uh, God. I uh, will take uh, by uh, Louis Pasteur, the great man. Thank you for giving this opportunity. Now it was an open session. Uh, there's an open session for that, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, is a uh, timing for uh, questions. Those who are having any question, please ask. Uh, sir, uh, there are three questions uh, from uh, participants, sir. Okay, okay, please. Yeah, so the first question, uh, do vaccine play an important role in uh, mental development, sir? Vaccines play an important role in mental development. Okay, um, I am I'm going to ask you a question to them. When the mental was developed? When, when, when it's going to yes. start for development? From birth, sir. From birth. Okay, yes, during, sir. The, during the birth, whether the baby is going for vaccinated now? Yes, sir. When? Active when? birth only they are uh, vaccinated. Yes, sir. Yeah. Active birth. After the three days, only the birth yeah. baby going for vaccinated. But during the pregnancy, her mother, his mother, going for vaccinated, especially for tetanal stocks, to prevent a new natal uh, death or yes, to prevent nasocomial infection. Okay, so those antibodies secreted from the mother, it can be uh, transferred to the placenta for the acute immune response at ED. After the third day only, having that vaccination with BCG. 
So BCG only for the lung-based infection avoiding, uh, tetanus toxin for nasocomial infection. Okay. Okay, 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 sir. okay sir. So vaccine we are taking during that uh, birth as a uh, what do you call is a uh, differentiation or uh, organ organ formation that that kind of things. Okay. okay. okay, there, okay. there is no chances to that. Uh, uh, vaccine is an influential role to the mental development. Okay, okay, sir. So okay. next question: uh, Does yes. the preservative affects the vaccine, sir? Does preservative affects vaccine uh, during uh, preservation? Uh, I can't clear, ma'am. During preservation? Yeah, the preservative. Uh, the preservative will affect vaccine, sir. No, ma'am. No. Okay. So that's why each and every year, preservative nothing but as here to keep the vaccine material. The vaccine is nothing but it's a protein derivative. So protein something. That protein sometimes going for specific activity or conglomeration or it's going for uh, crude for junk formation. To avoid that, we kept something uh, to avoid the contamination. We kept something as a uh, preservative. Here, that also we already tested in a lab. The in vitro condition as in vivo condition that is called as abnormal toxicity. One kind of test. In that abnormal toxicity, as such the preservative, we are going to test it in an animal. That animal should not show any kind of uh, what adverse reaction. So that kind of preservative only we are going to add it in a vaccine during formulation. Okay, 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 sir. Okay, sir. okay next. Uh, sir, whether a vaccine can heal uh, any neurological disorder, sir? Neurological disorder. Okay, a vaccine can cure any neurological disorder. Uh, yeah. Okay, some of the neurological disease like uh, rabies, that is a neurology, neural based rabies. Uh, and also dampness encephalitis, it also affects that brain fur, brain uh, uh, meningo meningo padi, and also meningococcal vaccine for the meningitis. These are the neural based disease that we can control by the uh, this kind of vaccination. Okay, okay, sir. Is this vaccine is yes, yeah, sir? Is this vaccine is uh, suitable for all uh, human beings, sir? Yes, uh, actually, we are testing the vaccine through only the, what do you call it, testing the vaccine to the human, what is the mice and guinea pig, because you, mammals, uh, we are checking the mammals, because more related to that, uh, uh, mammals only, we are testing that, it is the most suitable for the human being. Okay. okay and also, okay. another I share one thing, so each and, each and every vaccine should have that different type of immunogenesis to the person. Person means... There are person uh, height, person weight, person immunogenicity, the person what do you call person uh, immunological type of barriers, and also person the health the physiological condition. So that's why we need personalized medicine. So okay. personalized thing. So okay. So these are the criteria we have. Okay, okay, sir. Uh, the vaccine testing on human is based on a blood group or any physical uh, character, sir. Vaccine okay. testing yeah. on human. The vaccine is not tested in a human being, ma'am. Yes, That's sir. ethical issue. That's why we're testing in animals. Okay. So in this regard, what, what in this regard, what we are doing, uh, only in the phase two trial, only we are going for that. Only the efficacy testing. Okay, sir. Efficacy testing. Okay. Okay. Sir. Okay. Next question. Ma so whether any vaccine has uh, shown reverse reaction in the human, uh, like your death, sir? Yeah, yeah, that's the reverse section. That's why um, that is called as a, only one case has happened in uh, what do you call it, is it a sheep brain vaccine. Uh, rabbit sheep brain vaccine that was derived from the neural tissues, uh, neural tissues that um, that kind of vaccine, what happened not in India, it was causing the neuroparatic to the human person in one in 10,000 because of, that, is a, uh, that is derived from a sheep brain. It is not purified. That's why one of the main factor for the that sheep brain bridge vaccine was cut down in India and closed down the production. So then only the digital based vaccine was started. Okay, sir. So one more question: What is the yes. treatment for uh, what is the treatment for rabies? Whether a drug is prescribed or any uh, surgery is done to recover the person okay. from uh, yes. Okay. What the, okay. Your question is: What is the treatment of rabies? Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm going for clarified about that uh, rabbit patient type 1, type 2, type 3. Yes, sir. Okay. Type 1 means those person was affecting below the knee is a type 1, above the knee is a bite, is a dog bite, above the knee and below the neck is a type 2, those bite occur near the head is a type 3. How it was classified? 
yes already told rabies virus is not related to the neuron uh, related to blood uh, uh, vessels once enter to the body it's going for certain the neurotransmitter going for the movement okay i'll give one question to you if a virus uh, for example it going one cell one millimeter per day one millimeter per day if if i happen to the below the knee below the knee to uh, going to reach the brain if the person having 160 cm okay. how long it will going to reach the brain ma'am okay per day it can one centimeter per day okay, okay. oh is a brain is is person is 171 70 cm so how long it will take to reach that near being minimum 6 to 7 months okay sir okay so same thing was happened to the below the neck or near the hand it will take for around 2 uh, months to reach the brain okay okay, okay, okay. if anything anything near to the face or here or here it will take within a week is going to reach the brain Okay, you got the fact. Okay, okay, okay sir. Every person, that kind of every person, uh, and also we need a special care. The type one, type two, we are going for vaccinated within the seven days. There is a development of antibodies. After the seven days, there is going development of maturation of antibodies. Totally fourteen days for the development and maturation of antibodies. That antibodies is present in their particular person body. So, if the any kind of virus is coming, going for neutralize. because that person having is a uh, six month is having only two months but in this case of type 3 there is no possible to the development of antibodies within a 14 days and also that kind of person we have the another treatment that is called as immunoglobulin so convalescent plasma therapy what nowadays they are using in uh, covid 19 also plasma therapy yes that is a passive immunoglobulin therapy so already secreted antibodies is available either it's in ours or it's been rabbit that specialized antibody going to infiltrate to that person on the wound area in the wound area any kind of viruses as an antigen was there that antibody going for neutralize that area that is for passive immunization and also going for active immunization to trigger the person own immune uh, and antibody by the vaccination so this is a treatment of type 3 patient ma'am and also okay. there is no, there is no drug available against uh, rabies till date okay okay sir so, sir one more question yes 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 please after injecting the drug whether all the present rabies uh, virus will die or become inactive sir okay 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 i will clear that drug is different from vaccine okay okay sir okay you you ask again one question whether there is any chance of getting activated in future ever treat, uh, after treatment like in cancer no no that is possible that is inactivated and ensured in a animal test ensured in a quality control lab so that type of vaccine that's very irreversible that protein going to act only on immune responses or immuno hemopoietic stem cells hemopoietic cells for the development of antibody there is no irreversion Yes, yes. So that kind yes. of things only we are ensured during the IPQC testing, in process quality control testing, and also we are the quality control testing, and also we are get certificate from the regulatory council. So these are around more than three kind of chains were there, three kind of uh, uh, what do you call it? It's again uh, step there. But from the step we are controlled and entire things now. Okay, sir. So last question. No problem. Tell me. Uh, sir if covid 19 vaccine is designed in the pasteur institute what are the struggle uh, they face sir okay uh, for, for that here uh, we are we send a proposal to the government of india as a ministry for the approval of this thing but concern uh, government told that we are in the production of dpt group of vaccine here but uh, they suggested we are uh, we, our people is going for that uh, testing of the covid vaccine those was produced from serum by serum institute and the birth by the and also uh, here why the private industry the startup for vaccination means they are having dedicated dsl 3 uh, facilities for that production of vaccine here and also uh, i uh, kept in last slides same uh, type of production activity between uh, rabies vaccine and as well as the covid 19 vaccine only we need a bsl 3 there is no interest about the production of this thing okay thank you sir thank you uh, sir, thank you ma'am Uh, thank you yes, for your uh, clarification sir thank you ma'am uh, we felt a great pleasure to yes sir this is okay ma'am uh, we felt a great pleasure to have you among us on this international conference sir it was like uh, loading a new vaccine into the blood uh, when listening to your uh, presentation
Uh, really, it was uh, wonderful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for being with us, sir. Thank you. Thank you once again. Thanks to that management uh, giving this opportunity. Uh, and also, once again, thanks to Komadi ma'am and uh, uh, those who are narrator and uh, I know his name, uh, sp spoke about myself. And a question was asked by that ma'am and uh, my student, uh, Miss Thane Modi, and other colleagues for giving this opportunity. Wish you all the best to all. Uh, do safe and uh, a good health year. Okay. Thank you, Thank you ma'am. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank no, you, sir. No, 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 okay. Shall I uh, quit now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You can quit, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. session paper presentation will be continued so the participants be ready for the presentation now we will move on to the next session i request ms amudanila assistant professor department of biotechnology to introduce our chief guest please ma'am Good morning, one and all. Every thought you produce, anything you say, any action you do, it bears your signature. I am profusely overjoyed to take the opportunity to introduce our resource person of today's second session. Dr. Nagaraja Surya Devara is a lecturer, School of Bioscience, Faculty of Medicine, Bioscience and Nursing at Masa University, Malaysia. He obtained bachelor degree in microbiology from Kakatiya University, Warangal, India. Master of Science in Biotechnology from Bhadidasan University, Tirchirapalli. Doctorate in Biotechnology from Bardi, Bardiyar University. Uh, he is specialized in molecular biology and genetics with 14 years of teaching and research experience. Currently, he is working on molecular characterization of multi-drug resistant bacteria from poultry and environment, and also involved in collaborative research on phytochemical studies of various medicinal plants with emphasis on Moringa olifera. Published more than 30 research, research articles in peer-reviewed national and international journals three books and six book chapter related to medicinal plants. Sir received various reputed award includes Junior Best Scientist, Best Young Scientist and Young Scientist Award from various organizations. Sir acted as a chief editorial board member and reviewer for various national and international peer reviewed journals. He served as a resource person for several national and international conferences workshop and training programs. He submitted new partial 16S or RNA sequences to NCBA. He acted as an external examiner for PhD thesis evaluation from various universities around the globe. He is a media resource person for the 7th Asian PGPR International Conference to be held in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia during 2022. On this great occasion, I'm very glad to say that Dr. Nagaraja Surya Devra is my mentor while I'm doing graduation at Vivekananda College. I am very happy to welcome such a distinguished person for the current session. Welcome, welcome you, sir. Uh, thank you, Madam Mahmudar Nila, who is my student from the Vivekananda College of Arts and Science. Uh, I take this opportunity to uh, thank the management of Marudar Kesari Jain College for Women. Special thanks to the convener, Dr. Yam Gomati, who is the head of the Department of uh, Biotechnology. Then uh, thanks to principal ma'am, Dr. M. Inbavali, and the management and staff and your students. 
one and all who present here for this session. Uh, today, uh, during this session, I am going to explore you more on the biotechnology's role, especially in the, during this COVID-19. Before I start this session, uh, just I would like to inform you guys about uh, Masa University. In my screen, you can see my campus, which is a well-established campus in Malaysia, one of the best and pioneer university in Malaysia, where we are offering uh, Bachelor of Biomedical Science, Bachelor of Biotechnology, and the Diploma in Medical Laboratory Technology from our school. Apart from that, we are also offering the courses uh, MBBS, BDS, engineering, various courses are we are offering, including the MBA. Okay, so we move on to the topic, uh, what is the COVID-19 as on uh, pandemic current situation. Here some statistics I mentioned, luckily in India, currently we are not uh, have reporting such cases like earlier. We can say that's maybe the reason because of the immune system, even though it won't, went very worst in the community, but later yeah. it uh, came into the recovery phase. But still, uh, America, when you look into the some other countries, especially where I am living in Malaysia, when compared with the earlier, we are still facing the worst situation. But these are the facts about the COVID-19. So here only we need the biotechnology's help, okay? Uh, when uh, maybe the, during the time of 2008 and 9, Amuda studied with me in bachelor's in biotechnology, that time, there is a good demand, but there's a big confusion in the people, what to do with your biotechnology, what will be happen? Because I'm, I would like to address here the role of biotechnology is because uh, I see there is a lot of present, um, present ma'am from the uh, first year biotechnology and a lot of biotechnologists are there. You guys might be, may not be have an idea what really a biotechnologist will do. So here, during the situation, how we can be come up, you can see here some picture shows uh, what is the population among the 1,000, 1 lakh population, how many cases are there in the globe, but luckily India is in the criteria below 10. Here, this is the paper published in the cell press reviews. What are the challenges and opportunities for the biotechnology research community during this COVID-19 pandemic? Earlier, those people uh, told that uh, biotechnologies uh, may not be have an opportunity, but when you have the skills, when you have a knowledge, when you have the technology with you, sure you can sustain, okay? This is really a big market and a big demand for the biotechnologies. The coronavirus disease in 2019, where it is originated from the Wuhan city in China, later throughout the globe, currently all the economic sec sectors are affected by this. So now you look into that in India, already our own vaccine is started produced already. It's almost in the third phase of the clinical trial. So this before my session, very good interactive session with uh, the research uh, officer from the Kunud institution, Janadhan sir, he given very live information about the rabies. But here I will uh, bring you guys towards the way uh, how the COVID-19 vaccine produced by the different companies where the biotechnology's role is there. However, this has also offered the opportunities for the pursuit of new scientific activities, especially in particular for the field of biotechnologies. Here, I would like to introduce a term to you guys, the synthetic biology. Synthetic biology is the technique or the technology, which is engineering of the biology for the production of desired product, okay? The synthesis of the complex, and it should be a biologically based system, which display the functions that do not exist in the nature. What the today, the, what we are producing mm, vaccine, that vaccines are not available in the market, not available in the nature. So we are artificially engineering them. So this engineering perspective may be applied to all level of the hierarchy of the biological structure from individual molecule to the whole cell, tissues and organism. In essence, synthetic biology will enable the design of the biological system in 
rational and systematic way. Here, how you can engineer means by using the technology. One is the biology or the biotechnologies, engineering and the information technology, where this amalgam, you're able to produce the biomolecules like the DNA, proteins and cell. At the end, you will be able to produce high valuable applications like the human therapeutics and the industrial products. Not only in the industrial sector, still you're able to go to the agriculture, animal science and aquaculture and the protein production. This is the history of the synthetic biology, where the journey started in the 1970s, where the earlier molecular biology of the genetics and genetic regulation, where the cutting and joining of the DNA. Maybe we all, us, all of us studied from our bachelors to the masters. We studied about the different type of the restriction enzymes and digestions, ligation. Still, we are studying the same, the E. cor one cut, the GAAA, TTTC, okay, then uh, T4 DNA ligase, which is involved in the ligation. But where the journey started it in the 1970s and 1980s, by that time, the molecular cloning is came. But when it comes to the application, still there is a, some lacking at that. So we need to overcome from that. After that, now the when it comes to after the 2010, we are looking into the synthetic community and the consortial control. Okay, finally, we are now able to produce different type of the vaccines too. Here is the father of uh, synthetic biology, who is uh, reintroduced the term in 2000, the Eric Kuhl and other speakers at the annual meeting of the American Chemical Society in San Francisco. The term was used to describe the synthesis of unnatural organic molecules that function in living system. Now come to the vaccine engineering. Today, the almost it is a one year plus where the COVID-19 in the China, where it is it came to know to the everyone, where the novel pathogen, which is declared by the World Health Organization as a pandemic, okay? So to overcome this pandemic, potential emerge researchers and the epidemiologists start a race to develop the vaccine to the block them and emerging alternative promises to sharply be in that development cycle, especially the synthetic biology. Here I can appreciate the bioinformatics uh, experts who immediately once they got the sequence of the virus, immediately they did the molecular doping studies, then they find the alternative drug which can be uh, blocked that spike protein where the remdesivir or the uh, dexamethaflurane, different type of the drugs which are already uh, came into the market, which are already existing there in the market, then which may be helpful to uh, reduce it activity, but finally we cannot be eradicated. That, that's why we need the vaccine here. Vaccine development is an emerging application for the synthetic biology. How it's help, okay, helps the development of synthetic vaccine the fact that synthetic biology can start from the scratch means that new synthetic vaccine could be produced in response to viruses that themselves evolve rapidly, such as those that cause severe acute respiratory syndrome, which we call it as a SARS and the hepatitis C. What is the applications of the synthetic biology? Here, this synthetic biology rapidly growing field which involved the application of engineering principles in biology is now being used to develop novel system for a wide range of applications, which including today the, what we are using RT-PCR technique, which is as a best diagnostic tool throughout the globe. Earlier, uh, PCR means uh, very minimal people knows, but now even the layman, everyone knows the technique which is used to disease diagnosis, especially for the COVID-19 is RT-PCR then the RTK antigen test. So here the biotechnology role where we are involving in the diagnosis of the diseases. And you can do the cell reprogramming and therapeutics when it comes to the therapeutics, the drugs which used by the uh, bioinformatics tools and the vaccines where I'm going to detailedly talk about it, then biomaterials, biofuels and all. Other applications like the biomaterials where you can do the programming through the synthetic biology, where you can give the knee replacements are the joint replacement, hip replacement, and the currently available heart walls, blood vessel prosthesis, and the uh, contact uh, which we are using, the cataracts, and the dental implants, and skin repair devices. 
here is the anti malarial drug which has a synthetic product which is called the artemisinin where the chloroquine a4 dam uh, a4 amino quinoline which was developed in the 1940 as a synthetic derivative from the quinine okay so uh, it was effective cheap and a less toxic and was the drug of choice for malarial treatment for the decades however its use has been restricted in the modern malarian therapy due to the parasite resistance to the drug this is the big challenge to the biotechnologists or the any person who are involved in the industry always whatever the drug you bring into the market automatically within a short span of months that organism are alter their structure and there will be a resistance either it may be a multi drug resistance or the parasite resistance whatever it is okay this uh, artemisinin project team which is another anti malarial drug is using the synthetic biology to assemble a biosynthetic pathway of genes from the plant uh, a anova and other organism into the microorganism which give more or less a permanent solution for it then the role of bioinformatics here applying the computer science and uh, design the engineering concepts to the biological system the synthetic biologists are creating molecular and computational tools which enable the precise regulation of the cellular and genetic process this ability to use the synthetic biology as a programmable entities presents an opportunity to potentially create a new biotechnology process that is more likely to promote innovation and accelerate the discovery and reduce the clinical failures and ultimately be more cost effective when we are talking about the remdesivir here if a company want to do the clinical trials and phase 1 phase 2 phase 3 what just before mentioned if you want to do these all the way it will take the years minimum okay but a simple tool which is a very tedious process but a simple tool from the bioinformatics which is a molecular docking technique in a span of uh, maybe 3 to 4 hours of time if you have all the uh, drugs which are compatible for this viral treatment if you have 1500 or 2000 drugs at a time you can load them into the autodoc vena then in a span of 3 hours hardly you will get the most effective drug or at least you can get top 10 drugs which might be helpful for that treatment so this is the computational biology where it is a part of our synthetic biology help us to find the suitable drugs without going for the wet lab studies in a dry lab itself we are able to find it when it come to the vaccine design uh, what are the things we need to do the workflow first thing is the primary structure and the secondary structure and the tertiary structure we need to do first in the in silico cloning a gsct which is a jacet website based tools which will be optimized for the e coli then from there we need to go for the physiochemical evaluation where the aliphatic index and the isoelectric point solubility grand hydropathicity and instability antigenicity and allergenicity then move further to the secondary structure structural features by using the psir psipred 4.0 server and know the alpha helix and beta sheets and coils and the percentages need to be fine then the tertiary structure where the molecular docking to know the h doc and the tlr3 and tlr8 receptors then the b cell epitopes and their structural validations then you able to get a proteome retrieval then go for the antigenic protein production by using the software then IEDB tool to find the epitopes or the predictions. Here is the workflow again, uh, solution for the synthetic vaccine research and development. First, need to optimize the antigens, uh, gene design and synthesis, test and deploy the synthetic genes and its variants, libraries, and employ the analysis from synthetic sequential permutational libraries. Then uh, develop the immunogen. where you need to do the vector construction and a high order genetic assembly and you need to be introduced into the plasmid transfection then now once you develop the immunogen need to produce the immunogen the various cell types use then the cell culture and media optimization and fermentation 
then chemically defined immunogen will be produced. Later, we will go for the purified immunogen uh, by the chromatographic techniques, then the polish the RNA, DNA, and protein with a high capacity, high resolution chromatography techniques. Then, importance of uh, technique here uh, vaccine design. Vaccines play an essential role in the controlling the rate of fatality and morbidity. Now you can see where the people got the vaccination within a short uh, span of time, we will be develop our immunity agonists. Vaccines not only arrest the beginning of the different disease, but also assign a gateway for its elimination and the reduce the toxicity. To prevent the viral diseases, vaccines is the most effective method. The availability of the genomic uh, data and the software algorithms and the immunological data has facilitated the scientists to identify the effective epitopes that can be used to develop active subunit vaccines. The past vaccines through the synthetic biology, which is the moderately success uh, HIV vaccine, the synthetic vaccine in a particular long synthetic peptide of approximately the 25 to 50 amino acids in length are attractive for the HIV vaccine development and for induction of the therapeutic immune response in patient with pre-malignant disorders. A number of uh, BN antibodies and their respective epitopes on the HIV-1 envelope have been isolated and identified, enabling the design and synthesis of the carbohydrate and glycopeptide epitope mimics and their uh, glycoconjugate immunogens for HIV vaccine development was done. Then here the vaccine rational design for the subunit vaccines. Antigen first need to be get the database of the epitope and pathogen sequences. Then further uh, T cell epitopes through the in silico prediction and rational structure guided design of immunogens. Finally, the B cell epitopes found mostly empirical. Then data set requirements and the gaps in knowledge and roots. Uh, then finally go with the adjuvants. Then finally they deliver that product, which is a formulation design and uh, antigens and targeting molecules. This is the mechanism of uh, peptides, peptide-based synthetic vaccine, where you find a pathogen, then the target identified, then produce the protein, then epitope identifies and get the peptide epitope. Based on this peptide epitope, the vaccines will be designed this is the peptide based vaccine which will be able to produce yeah, or it will be able to kill directly vaccine may not be kill it but by the produce of that uh, immunoglobulins which might be kill that pathogen then we come into the covid 19 and the synthetic biology which was highlighted in a report from the european parliament as one of the emerging technologies that can fight the covid 19 pandemic then the National Institute of Health in the USA also identify the synthetic biology as one of the way to speed up the vaccine development. The labs and firms actively started applying their technology to contribute solutions for the COVID-19 pandemic. These vaccines consist of synthetic nucleotide strands, which trigger the formation of the proteins via the individual own cells, thereby inducing our immune response. Just before there is a question asked by the participants, uh, how the vaccines are work, okay? Here, a very simple thing for the treatment or whatever it is. When you administer a vaccine, either it may be a killed vaccine, attenuated vaccine or a mRNA vaccine, whatever the vaccine we are administrated in, then it will be accelerated or it will be mimic that particular targeted pathogen. So then your immune system things that that is the real virus then it will be start producing our immunoglobulin this is a very a simple concept of our immune system how it responds to it here the picture shows uh, prime minister modi when he visited the bharat biotech in hyderabad okay where are the first indigenous uh, vaccine produced by bharat biotech from hyderabad with uh, what is the combination of support from the icmr and also National Institute of uh, Virology, which supported them in the successful launch of this vaccine. Today, it is a really a Sanjeevani for the, throughout the globe.
where the different uh, companies are producing but uh, effective wise it's uh, giving a good results so here i listed few of the vaccines which are produced made in india products the first one is uh, covaxin which is uh, uh, collaborative with the uh, icmr which is indian council of the medical research and uh, another company zydus cadilla ahmedabad based pharma giant which is the cadilla company who are a big uh, one of the big brother in the pharmaceutical industry then uh, oxford astrogenica which is uh, dubbed as the covi shield in india but it is not the product from india which is uh, come through the serum institute and uh, launched in india then the biological e which is a hyderabad based biological company which is a biological e in collaboration with its uh, strategic partners and initiated the phase 1 and 2 clinical trials for this in uh, vaccine candidate in india a uh, very newly launched uh, product mindvax which is a bengaluru based medical pharmaceutical startup mindvax which was founded by the raghavan varadarajan who is a professor at the iasc molecular molecular biophysics unit and as i have knowledge this is the last one the genova biopharmaceuticals which is a pune based genova biopharmaceuticals mrna vaccine candidate could be ready by the march of 2021 this is a big race it's a really a big market where the bharat biotech is not really known to everyone earlier but today they are the world worldwide a big talk about the bharat biotech but still even though the third phase the clinical trials phase 3 uh, just uh, the director or the founder of their company told in january 6 they are really awaiting for that uh, phase 3 results to release uh, i need to update about it then the dna extraction what the steps involved here first the dna extraction from the virus the chosen dna sequence is extracted from the covid-19 which is already released in the around the january of the 2020 then rna is converted to the dna which represent the coronavirus genome this rna will be transcribed through the reverse transcription process then it produces the dna where you got the genetic sequence is generated then this genetic sequence is inserted into the basic text like te technique like the gene tra transfer where the genetic engineering technique the fragment is inserted into a circular dna strand called the plasmid then it further go for the plasmid carrying the genes are grown in the large quantities in bacteria its expression system then finally go for the purification how you are going to give it through the oral nebulizer or the intravenous currently they are giving through the intradermal which is the topical application transdermal or the intradermal subcutaneous or the intramuscular then uh, a research done for the synthetic dna vaccine the study test the efficacy of the existing synthetic plasmid dna where the backbone based vaccine technology again is the sars covid 19 2 spike protein that contain the receptor binding domain of the virus main highlights is the plasmid dna vaccines can elicit humoral response again as the recombinant covid 19 spike in small rodents then these vaccines can elicit the cellular response again as the recombinant sars cov2 spike in mice then this vaccine with the same plasmid backbone have already been tested in humans the methodology which is adapted in the research is synthetic dna vaccine development by using the plasmid cloning then in vitro rna expression in vitro protein expression can be studied through the western blot and immunofluorescences then in vivo study in the mice and the guinea pigs then later through the ultrafluorescence antigen binding assay elisa and the elisa spot test is done then another findings for the codex synthetic dna product for the covid 19 sars cov 2 synthetic dna parts which span the whole genome and useful for developing the dna rna and viral vector vaccines and pan genomic diagnostics sars cov 2 which is a full length synthetic genome the wuhan uh, hu1 strain of cov 2 cloned in a bacterial artificial chromosome for the development of vaccine therapeutics and diagnostics here is the data published 
uh, in the American Society for the Microbiology. The studies on the feasibility of the generating recombinant SARS-CoV-2 by transfection of a single bacterial artificial chromosome, which you guys might be studied about the different type of vector. Among that, the bags are the one of the best which are used in the genetic transfer, where you can be used uh, viral genome transfer. Importantly, our SARS-CoV-2 possess the same phenotype as the natural isolate in vitro and in vivo. This is the first description of a back-based reverse genetic system of SARS-CoV-2. And the first time that an R SARS-CoV-2 isolate has been shown to be phenotypically identical to natural isolate in validated animal model of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Then another finding, antibodies that prevent the spike protein from binding to the host cell can just block the SARS-CoV-2. The researchers employed the electron cryomicroscopy at the KLS recently opened the 3D EM facility to gain an understanding how the synthetic nanobody blocks SARS-CoV-2 by determining the structure of the spike protein bound to the Psi body 23. They found that some of the hundreds of synthetic antibodies produced, especially one called Psi body 23 proved extremely effective in blocking the binding process between the viral spike proteins and the human surface proteins. Here is the synthetic antibodies and nanobodies studied and finding. Again, it's the SARS-CoV-3 infection of mammalian cells and the developing nanobodies and Psi bodies to combat the COVID-19. Artificial particles a vaccine that mimics the coronavirus uh, promotes the potent antibodies. Then uh, a vaccine candidate made of tiny initial particles could be more powerful than other leading varieties at the triggering a protective immune response. Then the methodology adapted in this study for, by this researcher is designing the microscopic bulk shaped particle which mimic the structure of your virus. The researchers fuse the 60 copies of the spike protein, the part of the virus that allow it to infect the human cells to the outside of these nanoparticles. When the team injected the mice with the nanoparticle vaccine, the animal produced the virus blocking antibodies at levels compared to the greater than which are produced uh, in the people who had recovered from the COVID-19. Then the AI, which is the artificial intelligence software, which is called the Cyndia, uh, a discovered commercial drug synthesis. The software can help the pharmaceutical manufacturers to find the most efficient and cost-effective strategies for the synthesizing the medicines. That is the way we got the Remdesivir, which is the best drug to be uh, best in the sense uh, which might be help us based on the computer aided uh, drug design. If umifenavir, a broad spectrum antiviral, can fight the COVID 19, then synthetic roots could make it easy and cheap to produce it. Here is the artificial intelligence in tackling this COVID 19. Major advancements in the synthetic DNA vaccine for this world, DNA encoded, DNA encoded cytokine adjuvants, incorporating DNA encoded cytokines with the DNA vaccine could adjuvant vaccine induce responses. For example, is a co-delivery of interleukin-2 uh, was observed to improve the immunogenicity of the DNA vaccines against these SARS-CoV-2 yes and N proteins, influenza H1N1 hemoglobin hemoglutinin and uh, neuraminidase and HIV GP120. Major advancements in the synthetic DNA vaccine were the engineered targeted DNA vaccine delivery. The usage of the nanoparticles, especially the tissue plasminogen activator leader sequence has been shown to enhance the antibody response, cellular response and protection against the mycobacterial antigen and also increase antibody responses to the major bitch pollen antigens. Here the vaccine showed the world, Moderna and the Pfizer, 
which is the help of the BioNTech to make the novel COVID-19 vaccine. This Pfizer vaccine uh, throughout the globe, they got a good market because you, uh, we all of us know always uh, Asian based or the Indian based products are not much popularized compared with a European based or the American based companies. It has put the optimism uh, that a novel type of vaccine made from the mRNA, which is known as a messenger RNA, can offer high level of protection by preventing this COVID-19 among the people who are vaccinated. How it works actually, maybe you guys need to know how the mRNA vaccines are work. mRNA vaccine is different because rather than having the viral protein injected, we are not injecting the viral protein in this uh, Pfizer or the BioNTech. Uh, a person receives the genetic material of the mRNA. They administrate the mRNA when the mRNA that encode the viral protein. These genetic instructions are injected into the upper arm. The muscle cells where you are administrating here, right? The muscle cells translate them to make the viral protein directly in the body. This approach mimics that the SARS CoV 2 does in nature how the, exactly the COVID-19 external, the same way it will be administrated in. But the vaccine mRNA codes only for the critical fragment of that viral protein. You might be asking me here, when the mRNA produces a virus, what will be happened to them? It is not the virion part. It is only the, what we can say, which is a mimic of the virus, which cannot be do anything to your body. Then this mRNA vaccine eliminate we require the two doses of that. First is first dose is in the three weeks. After the three weeks, you need to take the second dosage. After the fourth week of the time, where you will be getting protection against this. So this vaccine eliminate much of the manufacturing process because rather than having the viral protein injected, the human body uses the instruction to manufacture the viral protein itself because that mRNA will be produced in our body. Here you look into this picture where the traditional vaccine versus the mRNA vaccine. In the mRNA vaccine, the components are the mRNA blueprint for the protein production. In the case of the traditional vaccine, where you are using the microbial protein or the inactive uh, virus. In the production, it is a faster because mRNA molecules are easier to produce. In this case of production of the traditional way, it's a slower and the more difficulty to produce the right type of protein. That's why the companies need minimum two to three time, two, two to three years of time to develop a vaccine for that particular uh, disorder or the disease here. Then the process, these components are injected into the arm and serve as the instruction for the body to make microbial protein. This, in this case of the traditional way, components are made in lab and injected into the arm to stimulate the immune responses. This is the major difference between mRNA vaccine and the traditional, which you guys might be studied about the uh, attenuated vaccines. Then the progress remains slow that because some, uh, when you look into the disadvantage part, mRNA is not only the notoriously unstable and easy to degrade into the small components because our immune system got right, even though it is mRNA entering, however, it is also easily destroyed by the human body immune defenses, which make delivering it to the target very inefficient. Thus, the extra precautions are uh, taken, such as the refrigeration to avoid that uh, degradation process. The coronavirus vaccine developed by the University of Oxford, which is a high effective at the stopping the people developing the COVID-19 symptoms, a large trial uh, done by this Oxford or the AstraZeneca. It uses a completely different approach to the vaccine from the Pfizer, uh, which inject the part of the virus, the virus's genetic code into the patient. The Oxford vaccine is a genetically modified common cold virus that used to infect the chimpanzees. It has been altered to stop it causing an infection in the people and to carry the blueprint for part of the coronavirus known as the spike protein. So here, AstraZeneca doing is where they're administrating a part of that viral genetic code. 
then these blueprints are inside the body they start producing the coronavirus spike protein which the immune system recognizes as a threat always we know what our immune system will do whatever the foreign body enter it's a trigger or it will be start producing it find it as a threat and try to squash it here are the different the popular companies and their way of producing vaccine and it's a comparison i mentioned for you guys oxford's uh, astrazeneca which is a viral vector which is a genetically modified virus everywhere biotechnology stole is there then doses are required the two but the efficacy when we are looking to the effectiveness it is range from the 62 to 90 percentage storage condition required is a regular freeze temperature moderna which is a rna part of virus genetic code again required the two dose 95 percent should be maintained at the minus 20 degrees can be long up to the six months of time then the pfizer biontech which is a rna virus which is a rna based vaccine then it also required the two doses again the 95 percentage should be maintained at minus 70 this is our uh, own vaccine uh, india's uh, first uh, what we called a native vaccine we can say okay icmr and the national institute of virology pune who are supported this project this is a hyderabad based biotech bharat biotech has been developed india's first indigenous vaccine for the coronavirus bbv152 which is also known as the covaxin it is an it is an inactivated virus based vaccine having a two dose and similar to the most others too how this bharat biotech vaccine work okay the vaccine is developed using a whole virion which is inactivated and administrated into the viral cells derived platform technology inactivated vaccines do not replicate and are therefore unlikely to revert and cause the pathological effect they contain dead virus incapable of infecting the people but still able to instruct our immune system to produce uh, antibodies against it or mount the defensive against and the infection here uh, covax which is a inactive coronavirus which is engulfing engulfing this virus particle they are the dead they can be injected into the arm without causing uh, covid 19 once inside the body some of the inactivated viruses are swallowed up by a type of immune cell called apc which are antigen presenting cells here is antigen presenting cell where you are producing the inactive coronavirus then it will be go into this apc then this AP here are the different uh, types of uh, vaccines which are from the different countries the technology used for the moderna which is the mrna based efficacy is 94% where the clinical trials you can see the phase 3 clinical trials done by few companies some of them are still pending with the uh, clinical trials for the phase 3 Uh, then what are the countries where the clinical trials are done where the moderna is from usa canada and uk israel and switzerland and eu then oxford astrazeneca which is used in uk argentina and india which is already through the covi shield which is mentioned it as a, through the serum plasma institute then serum institute then the johnson and johnson which is a viral vector a harmless virus where the clinical trial data to be released soon and it also required the storage condition everything mentioned sinopharm which is a china based where the virus is originated from there the vaccine also come in the name of the sinopharm inactivated virus sars cov2 virus is rendered inert through a chemical process that preserves the structure of the virus what about the risk of synthetic biology when we have a applications of the synthetic biology how to view in the light of the possible risk there are the two factors which make the risk governance of synthetic biology potentially problematic the first is synthetic biology which is the genetic engineering involve the production of living organism which by definition are self propagating the second is the growth of the internet and the routinization of many biotechnological processes the tools for doing synthetic biology are readily accessible 
Okay, then here I am going to show you guys about the computational tools where the bioinformatics tools used by the, as I mentioned earlier, the molecular docking tools or the homology modelings. Ultimately, it will provide us the way where you maybe use the biotechnology. First thing is uh, usage of the drugs. Then another one is you can find the uh, docking tools to identify the antigenic epitopes and you can give the better binding affinities through the antigen antibody uh, docking. So these are the basically which are currently using uh, technologies through the computational biology, which is through the bioinformatics. Okay, here I would like to play a short video for you for two to three minutes of time. Then, then later we will talk about uh, detailed on nanotechnology. The organizer, can you please let me know to share screening again? Once again. Uh, sir, uh, you are the host, sir. You can uh, share your screen, sir. Now. Actually, I am trying to share my screen, but it's not letting me. Host disabled the participant screen sharing. One second, sir. Can share sir. Yeah, yeah, I am going on. You are able to see my screen right now. You are able to see my screen, ma'am. Hello, ma'am. Are you able to see my screen? Hello. Okay, here I am sharing a short video about the clinical trials for the vaccines.
take to launch a clinical trial for new vaccine development? For every trial that you have, you need to have a study protocol. So the study protocol outlines all the details of how you carry out the study that you have in mind. And so one of the key things is what are the main objectives? And so for your first clinical trials, the objective is always safety. And then you are also looking at how does the person respond immunologically to the vaccine. When you do phase two studies, then you're looking at expanding that safety experience and also getting a broader perspective on the immune readouts in a larger number of people. Usually it's a factor of 10 that you can increase between phases. And then your phase three studies are your pivotal efficacy studies. There are other studies that you might do in parallel to make sure that your manufacturing process is consistent. But again, you're looking to show in sufficient numbers, definitive evidence that your vaccine either protects disease and or infection. You start with testing safety in a relative small number of, of healthy people and then you start to move it out into clinical settings where people who are vaccinated get exposed to the infectious disease threat you know in the course of an ongoing outbreak or circulating infectious disease and you assess the treated group compared to a control group to see if the vaccine is protective. And that can all take a long time and involve quite a number of subjects. The challenge with COVID and any other epidemic is that you've got to work quickly and you know there are lives at stake. And so anything that you can do to accelerate the time between each study, the time be between when you start and when you get your results is absolutely critical. And so the general development plan is often sequential. And I think in, in these pandemic types of situations you see a lot being done in parallel. Again, my screen sharing is disabled. Okay, there may be another 10 minutes I'm going to talk about the role of uh, nanotechnology is a part of biotechnology, how it is helpful for this today's situation to combat this COVID-19. Here is the biomedical uh, technologies to tackle the COVID-19 pandemic, current status and the future perspectives, which is published in the molecules. Uh, where we have different type of the vaccines here, the preventive vaccine strategy, where just now we talk about different type of the vaccines, the classical way of producing. When it comes to the nanotechnology, where is the applied nanotechnology, cationic, which is from the DNA or the liposome mediated or polymeric nanoparticles, then the RNA base, again, the cationic nano, nano emulsions, liposomes, dendrimers and subunit vaccines, VLPs and the protein nanoparticles, which directly target here that we are looking into this uh, directly to the nucleus where it will be transcribed to the mRNA, then it will be translated to the viral protein. When you are taking these subunit vaccines through the, these are the different products which are under the clinical trials or the clinical evaluation. They're given the different uh, number for it, which is the lipid nanoparticle with a INO4800, which is already under the clinical trials. If you do the administration of this vaccine through the nanoparticle, it will reach the nucleus and start the production of through the transcription mRNA, then later it will be through the translation produce the viral particle. If you directly administrate these uh, subunit vaccines, then it will be produced the viral proteins. Then here, the representation of selective naked eye detection of SARS-CoV-2 RNA mediated by the suitably designed ASO captured aluminum nanoparticles, where you are collecting the sample from the nasopharyngeal, then this is the expecting that there will be a COVID-2 virus, then viral RNA extraction. Later, we are using this ASO capped aluminum nanoparticles then to, together with this viral RNA, 
go for the five minutes of incubation okay after this five minutes of incubation it will form the agglutination which is a agglomerated aluminum nanoparticles in presence of this viral then go add a rnas then 65 degrees uh, temperature for the incubation for five minutes then later you will be find the precipitation okay which is the selective naked eye detection through this nanotechnology then similar to the recently there is a one article published based on it where do you wear the mask okay this mask already inbuilt with a test kit which is resembles like the pregnancy kit so if you if you expose to the environment wherever there is a covid 19 virus then your virus your mask will be have a code which is the pregnancy kit you all of you know right there will be the two lines so that line will be indicating that in your mask itself you can know you expose to that particular area which all are developed through uh, recombinant dna technology or we can call it as a nanotechnology based one but when it come to the biotechnology the patency then the technology transfer it is a main thing whenever the new inventions are come especially for this covid 19 design of this biomedical devices release release to speed up the innovation and their low cost and mass production particularly if you of the countries their lack of when it come to the korea that time there is a ration supplied only weekly three masks are supplied two to three masks are supplied for the one person because that time there is a very a tight situation for that country and also the supply is not much there the production is not much there so if you have a technology which is a with a minimal amount you can be produce it we can be transfer this technology it will be easy the new innovation should be shared then open access databases where the short and review process preprints available immediately to the pre access to the journals and limit time patent permission access maybe you got a good product maybe the 3d technology 3d designs the softwares or the chemical formation whatever it is a bring in but we need to give some limited time for the people to be access because we cannot be make it as a uh, commercial way even though you can make it as a commercial way but you cannot be hold the patent and uh, if you give it to the public then if you give it to the other countries they can be come out because it is related to the health right so we need to be bit relax about it then the patenting or other form of protection restricted access are use maintain to some informations these are the biotechnologists involved or the bioscientists involved uh, technologies where the ppes uh, here the protection uh, kits for the common people which is a normal public protection equipment for the general public developed by the biomedical science or the biotechnologists medical personal protective equipments with the help of the engineers also face shields okay then uh, ppes for the workers then priority medical equipments I, icu based ventilators are the 3d printing mechanical ventilators are the blood filtration devices which are all brings through the biotechnologies during this pandemic situation here is the nanotechnology used aluminum doped zinc oxide nanoparticle which off offers water repellency in addition to the uv protection where we are the cough and sneeze or maybe when you are uh, uh, exposed to the water that got the water repellent so it will be eliminate out the water so it will be easy to will be effective against the virus to be work then the metallic nanoparticle which made of the metallic nanoparticle provide additional protection and improve the safety then the silk nanofibers which produced via this electros electro spinning nanofibers provide an effect efficient physical barrier to the passage of the virus then copper oxide nanoparticles beside being cost effective and easy to synthesize these copper nanoparticles possible Uh, formidable biocidal properties too then uh, these are the surface decontaminations where you are using a different type of the nanoparticles like the aluminum nanoparticles which may be antiseptic and disinfectant properties by interacting with the disulfide bonds of glycoproteins then copper oxide nanoparticles which surfaces owing to the slow the release of the copper ions 
therefore providing a long lasting viricidal activity to the coating then graphene based then the uh, titanium based which are all used in the market okay then come to the bioinformatics where the antigen antibodies antibody sequence and the antigen sequence then antigen antibody will be go for the docking then go through the computational design where it will be give the lead antibodies for the production these are the different uh, nano particles which are used to uh, develop there is some advantages and some disadvantages of this technology come to the conclusion the covid 19 which uh, given a tough year of 2020 then now we are in 2021 still it's not uh, really a smooth way to go these advances in this technology through the mrna and the ep technology were harshen for the rapid design and evolution of the novel dna vaccine against sars cov 2 it remain to be explored how to immune outcome induced in the older participants compared to the younger participants as it has previously been observed that less potent humoral responses were observed in order in the older volunteers by a mrna vaccine candidate but when it come to the mrna vaccine there is a some disadvantages are known known to every one of us that if the mrna interact with our own immune system or if it is interact with our cells then it will be produce a new product then there is a, some issues are there which need to be uh, come up with a validated research then if scientific research studies utilizes this synthetic biology efficiently without much ethical violations then many diseases and infections may be elevated with a synthetic biology advancements okay as a biotechnologies are a computational biology are a computer science here i can see some of the students are from the computer science also here you have a bright future if you work hard in the particular area where today just uh, maybe around 1 hour plus time i was on the particular topic which is about the vaccines and the biotechnology and the nanotechnology if you have the skills we have opportunities if you explore much and if you uh, look looking for a better opportunities we need to be work hard then we we'll succeed uh, 100% sure okay once again i take this opportunity to thank uh, dr gomati ma'am and the organizers each and everyone it's my pleasure to uh, take this session on the role of biotechnologies during this pandemic thank you thank you sir uh, sir uh, there are a few questions from uh, participants sir so the first question what is the side effect of uh, covid 19 vaccine sir so far when we are looking into the side effects uh, it is a viral particle based on the if it is a mrna vaccine okay then i mentioned like there is a possibility of interact with our immune system then it may be produce a novel product which may be recognized by our immune system as a new pathogen there may be auto uh, immune reactions might be happen when it come to the normal uh, attenuated vaccine so far there is no such reactions if any reaction happen maybe there is a few cases reported in india uh, maybe in the uh, uh, bengal west bengal there is a one case of death after the administration but it is not maybe because of this covid 19 vaccine maybe they have some uh, other complications especially those people have the what we call the respiratory disorders so there may be chances okay sir so next question does the administration of covid 19 vaccine in men lowers or inhibit the male gamete production what ma'am sir does the administration of covid 19 vaccine in men lowers or inhibit the male gamete production sir yeah there is a research uh, suppose actually it's supporting about that there is a some complications in the male sperm cell production there is a lower uh, production of the sperm cell count especially there is a some cases might be the impotency also there there is a such cases are reported okay okay sir sir what is the advantages of synthetic vaccine and in what uh, circumstances the synthetic vaccine is preferred sir 
synthetic vaccine is nothing but which is not naturally available which is not naturally available we are producing it that is the synthetic vaccine nothing nothing much differentiate between the genetically engineered product what we are talking in biotechnology the genetically engineering product the same thing i mentioned here in the new term called it as simply synthetic biology in this synthetic biology i brought the biotechnology in i brought the engineering in where it help us to produce a vaccine which is not naturally available here we are worrying about the pathogen which is a pandemic pathogen covid 19 for that covid 19 you are producing a vaccine against that which mimic that virus that's it okay okay sir sir can covid 19 virus spread only to droplets sir the covid 19 virus spread only to droplets or any other ways sir droplets yeah through the nasal droplets Okay. This is what happening, right? Through the nasal droplets only, it's spreading. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. So one more question: A wearing of mask can lead uh, to any cause of uh, any causes for our sin as we breathe our own uh, hair or breathing. Ma'am, your voice a bit low. Can I get it clear? Yes, yeah, sir. Wearing of mask can lead to any causes for our sin as we breathe our own uh, breathing. uh when there is a possibility when you use the mask 24 by 7 yes sir but it's not really advised to wear the mask all the time when you are in a isolated area no need to wear the mask when you are in the crowded places even though world health organization itself suggested that when do you wear the mask when you are going to the public places when you are in a crowded places you need to wear the mask if you are in a isolated room you no need to wear the mask if that situation if you wear the mask sure there is a oxygen depletion in our body okay sir. which may be affect on our mental condition also the stress levels also okay sir sir why the covid 19 does not affect animal why it does not affect the animal animal yes sir actually it is a zoonotic infection uh, still there is a reports need to be supported where it is came from the wuhan fresh market but believing that but currently it is effective against the human beings much compared with the animals okay sir so one more question which vaccine has been injected to people whether uh, covishield or uh, covaxin in india it is uh, yes. recommended <laughs> the covaxin which is our indigenous vaccine okay sir nothing sir, wrong with the covishield i am not telling covishield is not wrong but okay. my suggestion according to the studies proven it is a covaxin okay sir so based on what the covid vaccine is designed based on just now i mentioned uh, it's a viral proteins are the mimic the virus or yes. maybe a dead vax a dead virus these are the ways ultimate aim is to uh, induce our immune system to produce the uh immuno immunoglobulin against that virus okay sir so what is the demerits of uh, uh, nanoparticles sir demerits of nanoparticles so far the study is not much supporting against it but where the accumulation of these nanoparticles for the long duration sure there will be some side effects but currently we are not it is a negligible amount since it is a nanoparticle but sure there will be sir one more question is the vaccine is to address particular function of virus or the whole functioning of virus sir what whole the functioning of virus it is ultimately to eradicate that viral which have the virion particle if you denature it automatically it simply like a, a toy without action okay so it's a mimicking only right so when you produce the immunoglobulin it will be completely eradicated uh, sir one more question is it uh, advisable to proceed with a new drug synthesis uh, using uh, nanoparticles like a uh, zinc or uh, silver nanoparticles sir yes why not because it's a targeted right when you are using a nanoparticle you are 
administration will be a targeted based one so you are not simply administrating to your entire body you will be reaching to that particular area then okay. the effectiveness will be increases so it's a okay. okay okay sir so last question uh, why all are afraid to take uh, sort of uh, covid shield vaccine sir it's not really a worry much but it is a mrna based as i mentioned just now right uh, when you are taking the mrna based vaccines there is a some side effects compared with a, a attenuated vaccine which may not okay. be caused by side effects that is only the reason okay sir so thank you very much for your uh, clearance sir thank you sir we have okay. learned the response thank you everyone for your patience for this time okay thank you See thank you. you sir thank you sir so we have learned the responsibilities of biotechnologists in this pandemic situation in your session sir thank you for sharing your ideas with us once again thank you sir we raise our heart in gratitude and thanks the almighty for blessing us all with the delightful day i request dr v aishwarya assistant professor department of biotechnology to deliver vote of thanks please ma'am good afternoon to all that's my great honor It's my great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this wonderful occasion. Let me first of all start by giving glory to the Almighty God for making today's occasion a resounding success. Gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues but the parent of all others. First and foremost, I would like to thank our management for providing us. with all the facilities to conduct this webinar i would like to extend my heartfelt thanks to our beloved principal dr m inbavali for his stewardship support vision and commitment in this webinar it's also my pleasure to thank our pro ms b saktimala for her constant support throughout this webinar as the saying goes gaining knowledge is the first step to wisdom and sharing it is the first step to humanity hence i would like to express my warmest thanks to our distinguished speakers dr s jagannathan assistant research officer tc arv production laboratory posture institute of india kunnur nilgiris and dr nagaraja surya devra lecturer school of biosciences Mahasa University, Malaysia, for sharing their knowledge and enlightening us on a commendable topic on subject. Next, I express my sincere thanks to Dr. M. Komati, Head, Department of Biotechnology, for continuous support and encouragement to bring up an informative event like this. I am grateful to the organizing committee members and other faculty members of the department. for their constant support to make this event successful my heartfelt thanks to all the heads of various department and other faculties for their valuable support i also thank the technical team electricians system analyst and other technical team for their technical support finally i thank all the participants and students who were actively participating in this webinar and making it a grand success once again i thank you all for your attention thank you